Good day everyone, it's London Onion here with our second class review and a discussion on potential builds as a solo artist. Our prime archetype of discussion today will be the Medic, and I'll be speaking on the efficacy of this class with the assumption of playing on the Apocalypse difficulty. My general philosophy being that what works on higher difficulties will usually work on lower ones, and with greater leeway slash room for user error. As for our itinerary, we'll first go through an overview of this class from a meta perspective, review the associated skills, then we'll conclude with a discussion on integrating a secondary archetype and a synergizing loadout. Of course, given the replayability, different items to collect, and classes to unlock, there is a good chance that I will revisit this class and sub-archetype pairing in the future. But without further delay, our overview. The Medic is a class of recovery and longevity, with a strong edge toward team support and selflessness. Ironically, these traits will mainly be directed toward the Medic themselves as a solo build. Each of the three skills are oriented toward healing in some fashion. The first archetype skill is Wellspring, and this one is the typical bread and butter skill of the Medic. Upon activation, the Medic creates a healing circle at their feet with an area of effect of 3 meters. Health recovers at 15 units per second and increases Blight Decay rate. Our next skill is Healing Shield. This one applies a shield to the caster and allies within 25 meters for 100% of their max health for 10 seconds. During this phase, everyone will regenerate 30% of their max health. Last, we have Redemption. Upon activation, incapacitated allies within 30 meters will be revived and recover 75% of their health over 10 seconds. Revived allies, however, will receive 50% of the healing amount. The longer the skill activation is held, the greater the amount of regenerated health, capping at 300%. Each of these skills are similar, but they have their trade-offs. Wellspring has seamless healing, the longest duration, and the shortest cooldown. The area of effect, however, is laughable in comparison. The Healing Shield has the lowest healing effectiveness, but adds a thick layer of temporary defense with a shield for all allies within a wide radius. Cooldown is significantly higher, but activation is seamless. Redemption is like a mixture, but with the longest cooldown and more of a nuanced effect based on activation. Healing could be more efficacious than Wellspring, but require a long activation time. Conversely, quick activation will still restore a good amount of health, but over the course of 10 seconds, where Wellspring can fully heal a recipient two or more times over depending on total health, or 225 health units at base level. To take full advantage of either skill, one will be more or less stationary at some point. The practicality of the three skills will vary depending on circumstances. Activating and taking advantage of Wellspring or Redemption while under pressure or heavy enemy fire may prove to be difficult. The Medic class does not really come with any meaningful defensive perks, outside of the Healing Shield. But once the shield is depleted or times out, one may be left with insufficient health and defenses. Lastly, the class does not come with much in terms of offense and ammo economy. The Medic can become easily overwhelmed with mobs of enemies or fewer tough enemies with recovery as the only answer. Though one-dimensional in its answer, the Prime Perk is a major part of what grants this class the strength of longevity. As one continues to heal themselves or other allies, they will be granted an extra Relic which can aid in their recovery. Whether it be through skills, Relics, or mods, the main modes of recovery will depend on one's preferred playstyle. This is not a criticism, but it will inform our choices and build when pairing sub-archetypes. For today's pairing, I'll be discussing the Regenerator Defiler. So the Defiler side of this pairing is the Summoner. Just to make this easy to speak on and listen to, I'll simply nickname this pairing as the Healing Summoner. The Summoner is oriented to passivity in combat, recovery, and an edge toward temporary damage buffs and lifesteal. Because of the addition of summons on the battlefield, a good portion of enemy attention can be diverted from the caster. As we had touched on earlier, the medic would likely struggle with significant enemy numbers and dealing high damage. Naturally, with the summoner as the sub-archetype, this translates to a decreased offensive load and additional damage. 
The synergy between these two seems perfect for their survival before even considering the loadout and skill settings. The summoner already comes with regrowth as their core trait, and this will play directly into the prime perk of the medic. Any health that is lost, whether it be through summoning or receiving damage, the summoner trait will heal. To make this more efficacious, the medic core trait, triage, increases healing by 50%. Now every class has some sort of extra benefit from using a relic, aside from the medic. In the summoner's case, upon relic use, minions gain 5% of the caster's max health per second, 15% increase to regular damage, and 15% increase to critical damage for 30 seconds. This would incentivize the use of relics not only to keep one's summons alive, but bolster overall offensive capability of the healing summoner. Looking back at the medic side of this pairing, healing one's summons will also count towards the prime perk, grant more relics, and perpetuate the cycle. As for the actual healing summoner's skill settings, that is what we will transition into next. So we had already been through the medic skills and their trade-offs. As for the summoner side, we can choose amongst hollows, flyers, or a single reaver. Hollows are solely ground-based summons. Flyers are airborne and can target both land and airborne foes. And the reaver is a hybrid, dealing significant damage to both ground and airborne enemies, but with a greater edge toward ground enemies. With this pairing, I typically favor either flyers or the reaver. In a zone with difficult to reach enemies or certain sub-bosses, flyers were more favorable. Otherwise, I go with the reaver. The reaver has the most HP of the summons and deals damage faster. Additionally, with flyers, enemies are more likely to target the medic. Despite the recovery advantage the healing summoner has, inviting enemy damage is counterproductive to survival. A major part of the reason of prioritizing the reaver is to have them take the brunt of the damage and also be the recipient of skill slash relic based healing and buffs. Naturally, the medic will assist with their offensive measures, but doing less of the heavy lifting. There are a number of fictional arrangements that this pairing resembles. The brains behind the brawn. The main idea being that one summon is their sentinel, while the medic is the lifeblood and conductor. To aid the longevity of the reaver, I would say one has two options for the medic skill. Either healing shield or redemption. Both are viable options, though for different reasons. Healing Shield can be employed while on the move, allowing one to heal seamlessly with the protection of a shield. Cooldown time is also lower, though not by much. Redemption has much higher healing effectiveness, but may not save one that is in a pinch, i.e. if enemies can inflict damage faster than one can heal, or if stopping to activate is more dangerous. This may be less likely with this pairing. Though at the same time, the healing summoner and their minion are just two targets. The medic will inevitably have to deal with enemy attention. Personally, I favor the healing shield. I'd rather have my relics as the only delayed healing option. Meanwhile, the other be seamless. The same standard applies if employing flyers. The wellspring, after all, would be virtually useless with them anyway. Now to aid the efficacy of our skill pairings, we'll speak on the loadout starting with our amulet and rings. So despite immaculate means of recovery and a reaver for some offensive relief, accident forgiveness is still necessary in this onion's opinion. As touched on in our overview, the medic does not have much in defenses outside of recovery to compensate for sustaining damage. On the apocalypse difficulty, this can leave room for the healing summoner to be one-shotted by an elite if their dodging should be mistimed. To help combat this, starting off with the Amulet, I have the most success with the Whispering Marble. This grants 3 Bulwark stacks and a 3% damage increase per stack. This translates to an 18% reduction in damage. In terms of overall defense, this is not much, but has been the difference between dying immediately and having some extra health left over when sustaining heavy damage. I treat the damage increase simply as a bonus from this Amulet, and not necessarily meant to be the reason for its application. As for our rings, I choose Black Pawn Stamp, Black Cat Band, Encrypted Ring, and Catalogger's Jewel. Black Pawn Stamp increases skill cooldown speed by 10%. 
black cat band relieves one of fatal damage by reducing their health to one and grants an increase to movement speed by 25 percent for 10 seconds this ring though proven to be a lifesaver in this onion's experience is not to be abused after receiving fatal damage one has about one second worth of time to cease further damage received this becomes ever more crucial if suffering from elemental slash residual damage such as corrosion or bleeding this is also why i prefer to employ the healing shield though the ring will provide the alternative effects for 10 seconds this does not mean that one is invincible for that duration next up I employ the Encrypted Ring for 20% regenerated health upon mod activation. Regeneration takes place over 10 seconds and can stack up to 30 seconds overall. The logic behind this ring will become clearer when speaking on our weapon mods. Our last ring is Cataloger's Jewel, which grants 8 units of mod power per second. Weapons and armor are mainly up to preference. I enjoy using high magazine weapons as my primary to assist with significant numbers. Meanwhile, the secondary would have a slower and harder hitting profile. The melee weapon is also up to preference, though I employ the Red Doe Staff as an alternative means of healing myself and the summons for a small portion of health. As a quick side note, healing from the staff does not count toward the Medic's Prime perk. Whether this is a bug or not is unknown to this onion. For armor, I have had the most success, having the highest level of armor while in the medium weight bracket to maintain mobility. But again, this is not necessarily integral to the success of this pairing. If you can dodge effectively, encumbrance matters a little bit less in this onion's opinion. Next, we'll transition to our mods, mutators, relics, and traits. Part of buffing the offense of this pairing is from our mod choice. On the primary weapon, I enjoy Concussive Blast. It can make short work of airborne targets and does extremely well with creating space from targets closing in. Additionally, this is an inexpensive mod and plays into Encrypted Ring as an extra avenue of healing, instead of constantly relying on the healing shield. Using a healing skill while in combat may not always be a safe option, or simply may not be fast enough for certain circumstances. So not only will this help with crowd control, but will increase health regeneration simultaneously and be ready to use again with ease. On our secondary, I employ Scrapshot to slow the advancement of grounded foes and elites. The accompanying mutators I use are Bandit for the primary as a means of preserving ammunition, and Bottom Feeder on the secondary for increasing damage as reserves deplete. On our melee weapon, Latency has proven to be rather useful in activating the Red Dose Staff's special ability. The special ability can also be readied by destroying environmental objects and activated for a later time, or to heal one's summon during rest periods. As for the relic, I favor the Ruined Heart as an extra boost to mod power and health regeneration. The shards I favor are Scale Cooldown, Armor Effectiveness, and Healing Effectiveness. Moving on to the traits, to help this build work, I maximize Vigor, Endurance, Spirit, Expertise, Amplitude, Blood Bond, Rugged, Bark Skin, and either Bloodstream or Shade Skin. Now, I don't really speak on consumables, aside from relics, as being part of a build though as a medic, I would consider it helpful to have cures for all types of blight ready as either a quick slot or in one's inventory. This is more of a preferential tactic though. Reducing the real estate and health capacity is a major disadvantage to the medic, even with the recovery as their meta. With the Whispering Marble amulet, the medic cannot be treated as a tank. It is after all, a small amount of accident forgiveness. Otherwise, that concludes our build for today. The medic, like the handler, is rather versatile, and we will have more sub archetype pairings to discuss in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.